Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Hello and welcome. Peace and blessings and light be with you. My name is Ihsan, and if this is the first time you may be coming across some of my content or this channel, essentially I am what I would describe at this point a faith based life coach. My goal is to help make more relevant, more applicable the spiritual path, to help clarify the spiritual path in the world that we live in, and to help support others in discovering and rediscovering the spiritual dimension of religion. Because I believe fundamentally that spirituality is the umbrella that encompasses every aspect of our lives. And when our spiritual path is properly understood and properly tread, it affects and improves the quality of our lives, every area of our lives. It is spirituality that helps us to achieve and attain to success, both in this life and in the next. In this video, I'd like to talk to you guys about affirmations. This is sometimes what is referred to as self-talk or even auto-suggestion. And I'm fairly confident that you probably know what affirmations are. These are phrases that people use to help restructure their belief systems. Because whether we like it or not, we grow up in the world, we're conditioned by the world with all manner of erroneous, problematic, and limiting beliefs. These constitute our belief systems, our structure. These constitute our paradigm. And oftentimes, these then unconsciously affect every aspect of our lives. So modern personal development has extensively now advocated the use of affirmations in order to reprogram the mind because our minds are constantly malleable. Modern research has now clearly shown that the brain is constantly malleable. This is called neuroplasticity. And it is our thoughts that actually restructure our neural connections, restructure the shape of our brain, the matrix of the mind. This then again colors our perception. This colors the, our experiences. It determines how we perceive the world and thus the results that we create, that we attract, that we believe is possible for us. So what are some examples of some affirmations? A few are, for example, I am worthy, right? because oftentimes we grow up with a lack of self-worth based on experiences throughout childhood, throughout life. And so to help correct that, modern personal development will advocate I am worthy, or I am deserving, or I am loved, I am beautiful, I am successful. These I am affirmations are actually quite powerful because they help reach to the core of our identity from which our results originate. Another example may be the universe is supporting me. The universe conspires in my favor and so on. I think you get the idea. Again, the point of these affirmations is to help restructure our thinking, our beliefs to become positive rather than negative, to become empowering rather than disempowering. Now, the question is, can believers, can those who believe in faith, in religion, in God, can Muslims specifically use affirmations? Can Muslims, can believers use affirmations and should they do so? And the answer is yes. In fact, we should and we must use affirmations, however, properly. I will add that caveat that we should use them in the best way possible. We should and we must use affirmations in the appropriate and in the proper manner. And so it's important for us to actually realize the affirmations are Quranic, meaning that they come from the Quran. The Quran advocates the use of affirmations, of affirming the truth. You will notice, for example, throughout the Quran, in fact, the entire Quran is an affirmation of truth. And what do we do? We recite the Quran. We are constantly reciting and affirming the truth. And the truth based on the truth, which is based on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Creator. So you will notice throughout the Quran, Allah Almighty says, say, قُلْ One of the most obvious examples is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, Allah, He is Allah, the One, Allah who summit, the Absolute, the Eternal, the Everlasting. Allah Almighty is actually instructing us to affirm, to say the truth. When we pray five times daily, we are reciting the Qur'an, which is an affirmation of truth. We are affirming the truth literally with our tongues and with our hearts, because the world is continually misprogramming us. The world is continually misprogramming us with fear and thus with unbelief, with the lack of faith. And so we must continually reprogram ourselves, purify our programming, cleanse and heal our minds with faith and with truth. In Surah Al-Anam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, say, Allah has prescribed for himself mercy. Right? Remind yourself that Allah has prescribed for himself mercy. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah is saying, say, Truth has come. وَقُلْ جَعَ الْحَقْ وَزَاهَقْ الْبَاطِلِ And falsehood is bound to perish. And so the Qur'an is replete with the order to say, to affirm the truth. The Qur'an itself 
is an affirmation of truth. So how can we as Muslims, how can we as believers, as people of faith, use affirmations effectively in addition to the recitation of the Quran, which is the highest form of affirmation? It is the highest form of dhikr. For Muslims, affirmations must be based in truth. And I'm not saying this because this is what it must be, but this is what is most effective. Remember in Surah Rahman, Allah says, Rahman, al-Quran, insan bayan The merciful taught the Quran, created the human being, and taught him and her how to speak. So the truth is embedded in the heart of every human being. And so when we align ourselves with that truth, with the Quran, with the principles of truth, it is going to be most effective and most conducive in creating the change that we seek. Rather than just simply make up affirmations without the foundation of truth behind them, we will be far more successful by using affirmations that are fundamentally based in truth. And I'll explain what I mean. In Surah al dhariyat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remind, remind. For verily, reminder is beneficial for the believers. The ancient Greek philosophers had an idea, had a belief that all knowledge is essentially remembrance. And this is true. Again, we are already programmed with the truth. So all affirmations really are. They're not wishful thinking. And this is sometimes what positive thinking is equated to. Just hopeful thinking, wishful thinking. No. Affirmations, real affirmations, the proper and effective use, the appropriate use of affirmations are essentially the use of reminders. Simply reminding ourselves what we already know to be true and what has been revealed to be true. Affirmations are fundamentally reminders. So when we as Muslims and as believers, as people of faith, employ and use affirmations, we should do so with this intent that we are simply reminding ourselves of the truth, of what we already know to be true, what our souls know to be true. And again, these must be based on a foundation of truth, which means they must be based on God. So some of the best affirmations are, for example, Allah is merciful. Allah is generous. Allah is forgiving. Allah is loving. Allah is kind. Allah is patient. Allah is the one who protects. Allah is the one who provides. Allah is the one who supports. Allah is the source of all goodness, the source of health, the source of healing, the source of light, the source of beauty. And Allah has created me. And so He has dressed me with these qualities. Because Allah has created me, I am worthy. Because Allah loves me, I am worthy and deserving of love. This is very different from just abstractly asserting, I am worthy. Why are you worthy? What makes you worthy? Your worth comes from your Creator. Your value comes from your Creator. Aside from that, we have no value or worth whatsoever. What are we? Where did we come from? And so to properly and effectively use affirmations, direct them, originate them, found them upon our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other examples are Allah wants to forgive. Allah wants to forgive me. Allah wants to help me. Allah wants to support me. Allah wants to guide me. Allah loves me. Allah wants my health. Allah wants my healing. Allah wants my success. Can this be other than true? If we truly understand Allah as He has revealed Himself to be, the most merciful, the most compassionate, how can anything other than this be true? Every chapter of the Quran with the exception of one begins with Bismillah rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Allah is the most loving, the most kind, the most generous, the most forgiving, and so on. And this is what we need to remind ourselves. I believe it was Einstein that said, the most important question we can ask ourselves is, is this a friendly universe? If that's true, where does that answer come from? If not from its creator. If Allah is the creator of this universe, then absolutely yes, this universe is designed, has been created to support the creation of Allah, to support the human being his deputy, his vice chariot. And so in order to effectively and properly walk the spiritual path, we have to remember who we are by remembering who Allah is. This is also why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, they forgot Allah and so He caused them to forget themselves. We cannot find ourselves. You cannot find yourself except by seeking your Lord because your identity comes from Him. Your origin comes from Him. He Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, Almighty and exalted is your source. He is our source. It is He that gives us purpose, and it is He that gives our lives meaning. When we turn away from Allah, we lose everything. We lose ourselves, we lose meaning, we lose purpose, we lose value. Yet by turning towards Allah, we gain everything.
And so other affirmations would be, for example, I am a servant of God. I am surrendering to God. I am turning towards God. I believe in God. I believe in his revelations. I believe in his messengers. I believe in the last and final prophet of Allah. And this is essentially what we affirm continually throughout the day. We don't do this just one time. We do this continuously, dozens of times a day. The believer is affirming, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And more specifically saying, I bear witness that Allah is one and that Muhammad Sallallahu is his last and final messenger. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. We affirm the truth continuously because again, the world is continually conditioning us to forget the truth. While the world seeks to fill us with fear, we must turn back towards Allah that we may be filled with faith. And therein is peace. And also why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَا بِذِكْرُ اللَّهِ تَأْمَيْنُ قُلُوبِ That in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find rest, peace, satisfaction, calm, certainty, tranquility, serenity. And so as a brief review, brothers and sisters, affirmations are not actually optional. It is an order from Allah. The entire Quran is a form of affirmation. And so we as believers must use affirmations. But again, they must be founded and based on truth. Not on the self, but on God. The self is the weakest structure to build upon. It's the weakest structure to build our homes upon. And this is why the self requires continual support. Allah, the Creator, God Almighty, is the foundation that we should seek to build our lives upon. This is why we as Muslims continually throughout the day, five times daily, turn towards the house of Allah, the Kaaba, in Mecca, and pray, affirming that the centrality of God in our lives is paramount that our lives are based and revolve around our Creator. What can be more noble? What can be more beautiful? So yes, we must use affirmations, and we should use them in the best way possible, by having them based on the foundation of truth. I have an entire week of content and training devoted just to this topic in the Islamic Meditation Program. In fact, week two of the Islamic Meditation Program is entitled Affirming Truth. Week one is relaxation, learning to relax the body, because when you're in a relaxed state, you are most receptive to reprogramming your own self with truth, to cleaning and healing the mind and the self. And so then with week two, we actually begin working with affirmations. Week three is visualization and so on. So for anybody that would like to study this in a bit more detail, I highly recommend the Islamic Meditation Program. And I'll have a link to that in the description below. Other than that, beloved brothers and sisters, I pray that you've enjoyed and that you benefit from this content. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to this channel, hit the notifications icon, and give this video a like. Also, if you have not yet done so, head over to my website, borderpoint.com, and get access to the free mini course and guided meditation soundtrack to start you on your journey. May Allah Almighty, may our Lord and Creator bless you, support you, guide you, strengthen you, and myself, and lead us together, inshallah ta'ala, to his divine presence of peace and to his pleasure to success both in this world and the next. Fi amanullah, peace and blessings be with you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.